Well, it's about now. I've got to do a very short sermonette. Very short. Oh, I think this one's on, so that one can go off. Thanks, Richard. So if I could just get my first slide up, that'd be great. So this one's aimed for our, mostly for our pathfinders, but I need to include adventurers in this as well. The motto of the Special Air Service Regiment of the Australian Army is, who can tell me? Who dares wins. In other words, you've got to be out there and give it a go to succeed. Unless you're prepared to put, you, to put your all on the line, you'll never know how successful you could be. I want to show you a picture of a castle in Austria. This is called Hohenwarfen Castle. And it was built 1,000 years ago, and it is on top of a conical-shaped hill that's 600 metres above sea level. So it's the same height as Mount Archer, but the actual hill itself from the surrounding countryside is about 125 metres above the ground. It's accessible only by cable car or a very, very steep walking track. Accessible by cable car and in more mod recent times, they, there's the cable car going up and you can see the steepness of the countryside around it. In more recent times, they have put a um, very steep tram that goes up to it. I can't imagine the angle of the seats in that thing to, to get up. So this is a bit of a tourist attraction, but this castle was made famous by a movie called Where Eagles Dare. And it's the story of a combined British and American commando uh, raid on this castle during the Second World War. Um, and as a young fellow, that was one of my, one of my favourite movies. But the point of, of it was, unless there were people who were prepared to take on the impossibility of getting into that castle, they couldn't have achieved their goal. There's a story in the Bible of two characters who were prepared to put their lives on the line in a near impossible mission. And I'm referring, of course, to Jonathan and his armour bearer. We don't know the name of his armour bearer. Jonathan, the son of King Saul. And before there was a David who slew Goliath, there was a Jonathan. And Jonathan knew that God could do something amazing if only he would trust in him. This is the area, and, and if you want to follow along in your Bibles, it's in 1 Samuel chapter 14 where we find this story. Jonathan wanted to go through this ravine. And on either side there were cliffs. And there's a picture of it if you get up close. And the Philistines were camped at the top of the cliff in the, in the distance there. And Jonathan set off with his armour bearer because at that time the army of Israel was basically living in fear of the Philistines who had invaded their land. And Jonathan knew that the battle was the Lord's, it was not his. And so he set off with his armour bearer with these words as they went through that very narrow gorge and approached those cliff faces. He said to his armour bearer, come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised fellows. Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. And his armour bearer said, do all that you have in mind. I am with you heart and soul. Now, Jonathan knew something that the rest of the army of Israel didn't know. He appreciated something that the rest of the army of Israel had long forgotten, that the battle was the Lord's, it was not theirs. And if God is on your side, it doesn't matter how big or small your army is, if God isn't with you, success will not be guaranteed. And Jonathan was prepared to go on what might, have, might seem a suicide mission because he believed that God could act on their behalf. And sure, he climbed that hill that day with his sword and spear in hand and he took on the Philistines and he defeated them. The interesting thing is, 
and I, I mentioned this for the pathfinders, by the time we get to the, the New Testament, we learn that it's not with sword and spear that God wants us to fight, but with his word. And the writer of the book of Hebrews tells us that the word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword because it divides our very thoughts. It divides our very heart if we're prepared to listen to it. Paul goes on to say in his letter to um, the Corinthians, he says, we do not wrestle with the weapons that this, wo this world uses. We don't use sword and spear, but we use the word of God to demolish every argument that, that puts itself up in the face of God's word. He who dares wins. Samuel knew, sorry, Jonathan knew that unless God was with him, there was no way he was going to be able to do the seemingly impossible. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. And Pathfinders, as you go through life, and I, and I can say this to the adventurers as well, as you go through life, unless God is with you and unless you believe God is with you, you too will face the near impossible. God is calling you to have faith in him and to go wherever he leads you. Because unless you do, you'll never know what it means to do daring things for God. Because he who dares wins. You know, a long time ago, the Bible tells us, Jesus set out for Jerusalem. He knew why he had come to this earth. And when his time had fully come, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he knew what he was doing was going to cost him his life, as Uncle Richard shared with the children this morning. But unless he was prepared to take that step for you and I, we would not even have the chance of eternal life today. And Jesus took on the impossible dare for you and I. Because... He who dares wins. One of the reasons we take you out into the great outdoors is to experience the amazing creation that God has made and to see those cliff faces and those ravines and those gorges. And, know, and we try and give you those skills to negotiate some of those places because life is just like those ravines and gorges and cliff faces. You will face challenges in your life, but he who dares is the one who will win. He who dares to follow Jesus is the one who will win. May God bless you, each of you, and we thank you again for your participation in our club this year. God bless. Would you like to just bow your heads for a moment? Father, we thank you so much for the ministries we have to our young people. We pray that your blessing will continue to be upon them and upon our leaders, Father, as we gently lead our young people to the foot of the cross, to you, the one who is the source of life and health and happiness, Father, come with us each now as we fellowship with our lunch and as we go into the rest of our Sabbath day, we just invite your presence with us. We thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.